Mimi. Hallo Lizenzverfechter der Open Source Projekte. Wir sind mal wieder hier auf silicon.com oder zur Feier des Tages connecten wir mal auf 149.202.127.134 und wir schauen heute ein Video von Michael Miles an, der auch gerne mal Mike Miles genannt wird. Ähm, und zwar, Michael Miles ist äh, ein kleiner YouTube-Kanal mit 44 Abonnenten, ähm, ist ein Video wieder about äh, Software, about, <lacht> über Software-Lizenzen ähm, von 2018 ähm, mit dem Titel How to choose an Open Source License und ähm, das ist ein Vortrag von HackBeanPod 2018. Das ist natürlich sehr wichtig, weil er hat denselben Vortrag auch auf einer anderen Konferenz gehalten und davon gibt es auch ein YouTube-Video auf seinem Channel und der ist der Sound so am Sack, Leute, da hörst du nichts. Es ist so hart leise und ähm, deswegen wollte ich das nur mal sagen, dass ihr da, falls ihr das, <lacht> falls ihr interessiert seid in das Video, dass ihr da das Richtige findet, aber ich habe natürlich das richtige Video wie immer in der Beschreibung ganz ordnungsgemäß verlinkt und ähm, ja, dann würde ich sagen, dass äh, Brauchen wir noch eine Kiste? Ja, sehr wie finden wir. Ähm, dass wir das Video mal starten. Oder wollte ich noch irgendwas sagen? Achso, ja, wir, wir spielen hier auf äh, Basic Augment, dem Anarchie-Server, dem Vanilla Anarchie-Server. Ähm, ist was kaputt gegangen hier? Nee, oder? Gerade nicht, weil. Ah, fuck, ich kann da ja gar kein, keine Kiste machen, weil dann. Okay, wo machen wir die hin? Wunderbar. Okay, ähm, ja, dann würde ich sagen, let's get started. Um, how to choose an open source license von Michael Miles. Oder Mike Miles. This just uh, so I can put it online. Um, it's not like recording video or anything. Just. All right, that's good to know. Everyone's here wearing the... Oh, no, you're wearing the red one, so... All right, let me just adjust this, speak your notes. Great. Okay, so thank you for taking the time out of your hackathon to come and listen to me speak on how to choose an open source license. This topic, I feel, is very uh, prevalent to hackathons. I assume most people here are working on something that is going to go someplace like GitHub or, or in a way that... So real quick, about myself, just in time. Uh, so my name is Mike Miles, and I work here at Genuine. My role is Senior Technical Solutions Manager, which is a long way of saying clients come to us, say they want something built, and I say, great, this is how you should do it. Uh, and then work with the other developers to actually build it. Right? Like, uh, my background is with using open source technologies, uh, mainly like PHP, uh, Drupal framework, you've heard of that, or Symfony. So I'm a big fan of open source technology. Ah, Symphony. Right this is this framework, was man letztens nicht einfach nicht liberal. Up, ja, oder beide, keine Ahnung. Which is focused Ahnung. on the non-technical side of being a developer. So everything everyone's doing this weekend is about writing code. That's a big part of being a developer. But professionally, there's a lot more. Uh, like how to work on teams, how to give reviews, how to ask your boss um, for vacation time, stuff like that. So we talk about the non-technical part of being a professional developer. It's great for starting out your career. So if anywhere you want to hear about me or know more about me, MikeMiles86 is my handle. So Twitter and Google Plus, anywhere on the internet. All right, enough about me. What we're going to talk about today. I'm going to split this presentation into three, three perspectives. First is why to open source software. Why do you use a license? Why? What's the value of doing that? Second is what are open source licenses. We're going to talk about what they are, what they mean, what they do to projects. And then finally, how do you choose to write open source uh, license for your projects? And I put right in quotes there because it's not going to be the same answer for everybody. Now to caveat all of this, I am not a lawyer. Um, and why this is important because uh, inter uh, uh, intellectual property is a big deal. Uh, and the licenses you choose for your projects have a big impact on that. So the information I'm going to give you, while it's very informative, helpful in choosing license, you, if you're ever in a legal dispute for software you write, you can't say, well, this one guy who I listened to at a hackathon once told me this. It's not going to fly. So 
him not a lawyer. Okay. Helpful, a helpful developer to other developers. Now, the other important statement I want to make to this presentation to set us all up is that code, let me move my mouse, is art. And I don't mean that because I'm a developer who writes code and I love staring out the algorithms I write. I mean it from a legal perspective and all the code you write is considered a creative work. The same thing as writing a book, as writing a song, as producing a painting. When you write code, it's a piece of artistic work that you own. And this is important to know because just like if you're to write a book, just like if you're to produce a song, you own the, what's known as the copyright on that. It's yours uh, to do with what you want. No one else can take it without the, you know, you can do that. Same thing with all the code you write. As soon as you write a line of code, you put it on the internet or you, you use it anywhere, you are the copyright owner. You are or your team. Or your team. <coughs> that means only you get to dictate how it's used, what it's used for, who can use it, uh, and who has access to it. Yeah. Det er så det hello world type. 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 Det er så det hello You have the right to say, person A, oh, person B, oh, yeah, person B, yeah, person B, work on your project, do whatever you want. Was. Person A hey, can't then go give your code to two other people. They don't have the copyright, only you do. So these two other people would have to come back to you. So copyright protects your legal right to control mm -hmm. who distributes mm -hmm. your software. Brr. Now that's great. And it, yeah, let's go. It may be useful in some cases, yeah, but in other cases, boy. the world today it may not be useful. Because what copyright also does is it provides limitations, such as if your code, when you write it, is intrinsically copyrighted, only you get to define how it's going to be used. So let's say our software that we wrote, for the sake of this presentation, is for GPS navigation for ships. Very cool thing to do. I actually have uh, a step brother-in-law who works on software like this. What if your software, though, could be applied to uh, autonomous vehicles? What if it could be applied to autonomous rocket ships that land themselves? I'm breaking right down. I'm turning that off. Aber, like, if you're not thinking of these uses and you have copyright code, it's never going to be used to solve this problem. It's only going to be used for the one thing you're defining it for. Also, when your code is copyrighted, only you can create improvements to it. Whoa, 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 whoa. So, again, we have our software. Nein, da war, whoa, da stand irgendwas. Uh, I've like a click. Fuck. If someone comes along and says, oh, sorry. If you say, I want to make this better, I'm going to add like a GUI on top of it. You can do that. You can alter it naturally. But if someone else were to come along and say, hey, I was using your software. I think this would be a great improvement to it. Can I give it to you? They really can't. And that's unfortunate because yours is copyrighted. They wrote some code. Their code is copyrighted. There's this whole legal gray area where it's You were to take their code, put it in your copyright code, who then owns the copyright. Legal disputes happen. It happens all the time, and it gets ugly. So yeah, really, only you can say mm. improvements happen. Wasn't against crafting. With this idea of copyright and writing code and having it copyrighted versus having it being open source, I always go back to the question I think all developers we need to answer for ourselves is, why do we write software? Um, and when I was walking around today, I saw you have by the bathrooms this great poster about technology should be dot dot dot. People are describing their ideas, and there are two things on there that I'm so excited to see written down. One is that it should be open to everyone, and it should improve the world. Those are great. Those are great insights, and I totally 100% believe it. Um, we write software to solve a problem. Like, that's what everyone's doing here today. They're, Came up with an idea because there's a problem in the world that you want to fix. You want to make better. Sleep in the We write right software right? as developers to solve the world's problems. Okay, stop. That's great, but we only have so much insight into the rest of the world and the problems that they have. 
So by open sourcing our software, what we do is make our software open to the world so it can help us solve the problems. So we can say, hey, here's something I produced to fix this thing, to make something cool. And we open source the rest of the world to say, oh yeah, but here's how you can make it better so it works for me, it works for these other people. So it allows us to really build software that changes the world and opens it up to everybody. So now I want to talk a little bit about what open source means. There's this idea that open source means free. That's not true. Just because you open source your software doesn't mean you have to give it away for free. You can still open source software and make money on it off of it. If you want to do that, your, your company can use it to make to build things that when they sell. Tons of companies do this. What open source means is that it, it, it means inviting others to contribute to your work and improve upon it. But, and this is why I, we'll get into why you want to use open source license, you still have the control over how that gets done. Haha, ha, it's nice to choose this movie now, it's tied with so for the Möglichkeit gibt es der nicht, ne? Oh mein Gott. Ich, äh, weiß so nicht, ob meine Maschine hier eine gute Idee war. Oh mein Gott, okay, okay Leute, ich muss kurz nachschauen. Ähm... Jedes Mal aufs Neue. Okay, wir haben oben die Milch. Und ich werde diese Weizen nie wieder einsammeln. Oh, ich Idiot. Dann haben wir unten den Weizen. Und dann. So, ah, okay. 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 Ja, das funktioniert doch erstaunlich yes. gut. Say we get rid of that, we open source our code. Now what can happen is someone can take this, they can create what's known as a derivative. They can use ours as a base, change yeah, it around, somebody they can code for uh, autonomous vehicles. Someone else can come along, take our code base, alter it, and SpaceX can use it for their space navigation. Awesome. We have this one problem that we were trying to solve, and all of a sudden we're solving all these other problems in the world. Derivatives, which, which these are, their alterations are extensions of a piece of software. Open sourcing our software also, improve, also invites improvements from other people to our software. Vielleicht kommt eben Creeper und jagt ja alles in die Luft, oder? Someone comes along and says, know it, I can make your GPS navigation 10 times more precise. Here's the code to do it. Great. You can pull that in, you can apply it to your project. No problems there, because you're open source. Someone else can come along and say, oh, here's another improvement. Someone else can say, here's another improvement. And all of a sudden, you're getting the world of developers offering their insight and experience to build on top of what you did. I love it. It's what I do every day. So you say, okay, great. I'm not going to copyright my code. I'm just going to put it out there and just say, hey, anyone can use it. And you can do that. That's called an unlicense. It's basically putting your code in the public domain. There's nothing wrong with that, but it removes some protections on your code that you may want to keep. So why use an open source license instead of just putting it out there in the world? Okay, we have our software. Let's say we have tracker. Let's just say we wrote a library for GPS navigation. Now, we can take that open source piece, put it in a distribution, a bigger package of code. And we can copyright that distribution. It could be you know, a piece of software, like the operating system or another application. And we can sell that distribution for the ship navigation. Someone else takes our open source piece of GPS, they make a derivative, they put it into their autonomous vehicles. There's nothing wrong with that. That's great, right? Right, I went through that. But what if someone were to come along, create an alteration, put our code in a distribution for ship navigation? What if they start to compete directly with what we're doing? An open source license allows us to protect against this. Because we can say, you can use the license, you can use our code under these conditions. One of them being, you can't go after my business. But you can use it for any other purpose you want. If you just put your code out there, unlicense it, you can't protect against that stuff. You can't protect your intellectual property. Uh, and some people may argue, you know, you, you, that's a good thing. You know, it, it promotes, con um, what's the word I want? Uh, not conflict. I don't know. It promotes uh, people to, like, compete against each other. Competition. Oh, man, that's the word I want. 
But you may want to put restriction around how your software is being used and you still want others to use it. That's why you choose an open source license. Open source license allows software to be freely used, modified, and shared while establishing a guideline. You get to set the guidelines on how it's going to be done. There are many, 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 many open source licenses out there. And it's, you can also write your own one. I would not, never recommend doing that. Unless you're a lawyer. Who knows that stuff? That's great. Uh, luckily, there's a there's a group out there called the Open Source Initiative. They've been around since the 1960s. They're a nonprofit group. All they do is evaluate licenses, open source licenses, and then approve or deny them and say, hey, yeah, this is good to use. Here's the protection that it provides. This is how you can use it. Or they may say, no, no, this is an open source license. Here's what's wrong with it. Go fix it. You want us to do it. They've been around for a long time. They evaluate all big licenses. They know what they're doing. They have a bunch of criteria that they use to evaluate open source licenses. And I want to just hit on the four biggest pieces uh, that I think impact us day to day. First and foremost, an open source license has to be free to use. You can't write a license to say, this is open source, but give me a royal It doesn't work that way. If you write an open source license, it has to be free for someone else to use. Open source licenses must require a clause that has that provides access to the source code. So the open source license must say anyone who takes this project must have access to the compiled and the uncompiled version of the code. Open source license man muss must allow access for the compiled of version of the Interessant. Must state that a das heißt, wenn ich den nur den source code veröffentliche und keine binaries distribute, dann ist das illegal? You want me? Oder, oder sind das nur die Kriterien für die Free Software Foundation? Ich weiß nicht. Wenn du deinen Code als Open Source markierst, bedeutet das, dass du andere Leute erlaubst, zu kreieren. Und eine Sache, die alle die Open Source Licenses haben in common, sie machen diese Dinge anders, die ersten drei, among other Kriterien. Aber was sie alle pretty much do, ist garantieren, dass wenn jemand deinen Code nimmt, sie haben die Attribution Attribution Fact zu geben. Also sie haben zu sagen, ich habe das nicht gemacht, das ist eine wirklich smarte Person, ich habe es nur benutzt. Now there are two main types of open source licenses. There's what's known as copy left licenses, kind of play on copyright, and derivative licenses. Oh, sorry, permissive licenses. Derivatives are right. So copy left and permissive. I want to break these down a little bit to explain the difference. So copy left licenses work this way. You have your software, it's open source, you apply a copy left open source licenses to it. Someone creates a derivative of your work. Copy left licenses state that if someone creates a derivative of your work, they must apply the same exact license. Basically it says they must keep their version open source. Someone makes an alteration, an add-on that they want to contribute back to your project. <laughs> Copy left licenses say if you want to do that, that alteration has to use the same, the same license. Right? It's, it's perpetually promoting this idea of open source that I'm saying software can be used this way that I wrote, anyone who uses it has to follow these guidelines. To some degree, copy left licenses say if your code gets put into a package, a distribution, that package also has to use the same exact license. So it actually itself has to be Now there are actually two types of copy left licenses. Weak and strong. Weak copy left licenses protects for just these two scenarios, for derivatives and alterations. The copy left just says, if you want to take my code, you want to make a change to it, great, you have to use the same license. I don't care if you take my code and put it in a, in a package that you want to then distribute and sell in closed source, fine, do that. Strong copy left covers all three scenarios. It says, no matter how my code is being used, you must use the same exact license. So that's copy left. It basically states anything using your code has to follow the same license as you. Permissive licenses are a little more loosey-goosey. They're a step above pretty much having no license, for the most part. So let's say we have our, our code. We put a permissive license on it. Now, if someone were to make an alteration, they can go ahead and apply a different license to their, their version. Now there's still some guidelines, like it has to be an open source, or depending on the person like you choose, it has to follow certain guidelines. But they could put a copy left license on it, 
they could uh, not even they copyright their version. There's stuff you can do. Same thing with an add-on. Right, they can create an add-on that has a compliant but different thing. license. Okay. Submit it back to you. That's your project. Or someone can take your code, show. make a distribution, close source it, put their copyright on it, and they can sell that. So permissions like to say that derivatives edition distributions don't have to use the same tech license. They don't even have to use an open source. But it's still a way what all permissions like to pretty much say is you have to provide attribution on sale. So it protects you so the world knows you created the same thing. Alright, so there's permissive licenses, there's sweet copyleft, and strong copyleft. Use open source licenses to Open your software to the world so others can use it, benefit from it, and improve upon it. All right, but what type of open source license do you use for your projects? I want to take you through, it's basically four, the only four questions you have to ask yourself to figure out what type of license to use. And I, I will hope that after this you can use that this weekend before you submit your final projects. First question, what yeah. licenses are already in use by my software? How many people here are working on a project where you're using a pre-built package or library that you're not creating yourself. Raise your hand. Everyone's writing as themselves. Everyone's writing their own JavaScript library language. No, everyone pretty much is. Like That's what we all do every day. If you're using something that's pre-built, say you're using Angular, say you're using uh, a Python package you found to connect to Spotify, say you're using, you're integrating with an API um, for machine learning, check their licenses. Because they're going to have licenses on their software. Because it's open source. That's how they open it for you to use. They can have a strong copyleft license that says, your software, if you want to use us, has to use the same license as us. So that's going to dictate what type of license you may use. And if you don't agree with the licenses that software uses, you're going to have to find a different package, a different library. Second question is, what are the terms of service where my software is hosted? This is one thing that people don't really think about. Let me ask, how many people here are putting their project up on GitHub this weekend? All right, number of hands, double of hands. Hey, I'm the terms of service. Um, yes. GitHub has, in its terms of service, a clause that states, if you put your code on GitHub, you have to allow for the creation of derivatives. You have to oh, allow for what's known as forking your project base. Now, they can be private forks, or they can be public forks, but you have to allow people to create derivative works. That's awesome. If you're already thinking about open sourcing, that's great for you. If you're like, I want to put my software up on GitHub, and I don't want anyone to be able to touch it, it's a little gray area. So yeah, there's other private places where you of GitHub, code, then like there's uh, kind of a thing called packages for uh, terms of service libraries, yeah. you know, NPM, or stuff like that, that they may have terms of service requests that say you have to use these sort of licenses. These first two questions are kind of like outside of your exact code. It's more about what you're using power your software. The next question, though, is directly that you control is, do you want derivatives, additions, and distributions to have to use the same license? Oops. If you say, yeah, I want I want anyone who uses my software to follow the same guidelines I'm following, then you want a copy left license, right? Talk about that. If not, you're like, no, I just want people to use this, but I want a, a couple small guidelines, and I want to make sure I get the credit for the work I did. You want a permissive license. If you go with copyleft, there's one other question to ask yourself, which is, can others use my software in their own proprietary software? Basically, do I care if people are going to use this to make money? If you don't, go with weak copyleft. So then you allow people to create their distributions, so then they can sell and package your software. If you do care, you're like, no, 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 no. I don't want anyone to benefit from well, not benefit, profit from my work. Strong copyleft, so no matter how they use the software, they have to use These are four questions you ask yourself to figure out what type of open source license you want. What else am I using that I didn't write? Where am I going to put this software? Uh, do I care what type of license people use? Do they want to follow the same one as me? And do I want to allow people to put it in proprietary software? That gives you kind of like a decision tree to figure out if you want weak copyleft, strong copyleft, or permissive. All right, Mike, that's great, but which license specifically? Tell me. We don't know. What, I want to know exactly what license to use. I can't tell you that. It's going to be different for every project, every Not team, totally. every organization. You're going to have rules and guidelines 
and thoughts about how you want that thought to be used. And like I said earlier, there are a lot of licenses out there. This is a couple of examples of the most common ones by these three categories. So Strong Copy Left is the GPL license, the new public license, uh, written way, way, way back, back then, before I was even born. Um, like Linux uses this, GNU uses it. They're very strong copy left. They say, if you, if you want to use Linux, you want to write packages for it, you pretty much have to be open source. Again, there are some things around that. Uh, the Eclipse strong copy left license. We copy left is an LGPL, the lesser new public license. Mozilla's public license. And the permissive, like MIT and Apache 2.0. Yes. Yes. They all are. So the question is, is copy left related to copy right? So uh, what you missed at the very beginning is when you write software without putting a license on it, you own the copyright to it. That means you are the only person who's allowed to distribute it. Copy left is a play on that word. It's like the opposite, where you're opening up your software so other people can use it and alter it. So that's my what I know is the, the origin of that word. So I can't tell you which of these or the one, even ones that aren't listed here, which ones to use. I can tell you to use OSI approved licenses, but I can give you guidelines on how to decide once you know what type of license to use, which one specifically works for your project. First and foremost, and I just said it, only use licenses that are approved by the OSI, the Open Source Initiative. They, every day, all they're doing is reviewing licenses, making sure it protects the copyright owner or the creator of the work and the people who are going to use it. Make sure there's protections on both sides. No one's doing any crazy clauses that then like screws people over. Read the license before you use it. Now this can be hard because a lot of them are written in legalese and none of us here are lawyers. Uh, there's a really fun website called tldrlegal.com. Yeah, so they do things like terms of services for, for social networks, all the open source licenses, all other licenses. You go there, you look it up, and they put those licenses into basic English terms. They say, this provides these protections, allows for this creations of work, and these are the limitations. So you can quickly get a glance about, all right, this is what this license means. This is what it means for my project and for people using it. And the most important thing is, once you pick a license, do not change it. Now, this is for ver per version of your software. So if you produce, let's just say, version 1.0 of your our GPS software, we put it out there with a permissive license. It goes out in the world, and suddenly you think, you know what, actually, I want to make a strong copy left. You cannot change the license on version 1. You can read version 2 with a different license, put that out there, that's fine. But the legal trouble starts if, as soon as you put software out there, you have to assume someone's already copied it. They've already made a change, they've already made an alteration, they've already forked it, or made a distribution. Aber man kann die auflockern, oder? Wenn ich jetzt Software noch unlizenziert hatte und sie dann Public Domain machen will, das geht ja, oder? Someone made a derivative, they put it in a package work, and then they were selling as proprietary reasons. And we're like, no, we're going to change it to strong copy left. Suddenly, you could like, Slyly try to sue that person. They're like, oh, you're not following my license. But then they're going to get back to you and be like, well, this was the license at the time. It's all this crazy legal stuff. So, crazy once you license, stuff. stick with it until you switch to a newer version. Now, something that came up late, earlier last year with changing licenses, how many people here have used Angular? Or heard of Angular? All right, heard of it. It's owned by Facebook. And they had, um, uh, uh, I think it was a permissive license uh, that basically said, hey, you can use the Angular library to your heart's content. But they had a clause in there, a modified BSD license that said, except you can't use it for anything uh, that would compete against Facebook, nor can you sue Facebook for any reason. <laughs> People are like, whoa, 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 Facebook does a lot of things. Who knows? They have a lot of money. Who knows what they're going to do in the future? If I'm using Angular 2 and I can't sue Facebook in the future for any reason, that's not, that's no bueno. The people are start, starting to drop Angular. Facebook was like, oh, there's a problem. Yeah, and I mean, when Facebook später irgendein Projekt erstellt, was mit deinem Computer, sagen wir mal, man verwendet Angular, um einen Service zu erstellen, den es jetzt vielleicht so noch nicht wirklich gibt, 
Und dann kommt Facebook daher und sieht, boah, der Service läuft ja super gut. Und dann machen die auch sowas und dann können die dein Projekt zumachen und sagen, hey, äh, du competest mit uns, <lacht> mit uns, und dann äh, Snack, bist du weg vom Fenster. <lacht> und wenn du dich beschweren willst, darfst du nicht. <lacht> Richtig geil. Funktioniert es so? Keine Ahnung. Leute, Recht ist echt wild. Wilde Sache. They want people to use their stuff. So they created a new version of Angular with a different license. They got rid of that uh, patent clause and the world is much happier. So to recap, open source projects change the world. I totally believe that. Everyone here, I bet, is working on something that they would hope would change the world. I strongly recommend you open source your projects. Especially because it's a hackathon, you're not going to build something perfect in 40 hours, maybe it close. Uh, but you want others to contribute. Mm. Adding an open source license to your project invites other people to do that, to make your work better, to alter it, to use it, to benefit the world, to share and modify it. So think about applying an open source license to your project this weekend. And no one can tell you the best license for your project. Maybe a lawyer can who knows intellectual property and software law. But select the right project, sorry, select the right license for your project by asking yourselves the right questions. I guess Do I want other people who have to follow the same guidelines as me? Do I care if they're going to make money off of this by putting in distribution? Where am I being hosted? What other libraries am I using that for restrictions? Those lead down the path to know if you do a strong copy left, be copy left, or missing. So before I get into questions, I want to list some resources for you, everyone here. The first is the Vivi Link Acme OSL, which is this presentation. It's on Google Slides. So I don't have to listen. It's like, it's like an open source thing, because you can create a copy of it. So it's an open source presentation. Uh, the link so why is it not on GitHub? Which is the open source <laughs> They read all those licenses. Prove it. Fucking Google. ChooseLicense.com is a fun tool by GitHub. Ask you basically those four questions I asked you, or I presented to you, and they help you decide what license. Okay, they get a little more explicit and be like, "Hey, the Apache license may be the best fit for you." TLDRlegal.com. Turn all that legalese into English so you can understand it. Uh, and then just link to my podcast again, developingup.com, if you want to start thinking about things that aren't code related but have to do with a career in development. So with that, any questions? So, Natürlich. Well, if you have, all right, no hands yet. But if you have questions later, I'm on Twitter, my like, mouse lady six. I'll be around here till probably like three o'clock, so for another hour. If you have questions about licensing, um, I can give you my knowledge and advice. Oder? <laughs> um, and uh, it's always fun to have a class. Oh, yeah. oh yes, can you kiss the Anyone has any questions? So, if you do not put any license on your project, what that means is that you own the copyright to that project. So, anyone else looking at your code, if there's no license to it, if they are paying attention, they're going to assume I can't use this code because it's copyrighted. So, that's that's the right you have for creating a piece of creative work. Is that you create it, you put it out there, you own the copyright. Just like if you're to write. Uh, a song, eigentlich put it praktisch. on the internet, you own the copyright to that song. Right. Eigentlich, so if eigentlich you don't buy a license, the license that automatically gets applied is the copyright license. Yes? Ja, aber ich kann es auch in mich reinsetzen. Haha! <laughs> <laughs> Sit funny. Yeah. <laughs> so the question is, you know, how do you think about this every day when you're doing a project? Yeah, so like also like what's your responsibility versus like like the legal. Yeah, so it's it's a little mixed. I think as a developer it is your responsibility to know what you're using and what the implications of what you're building. Because if you're building something uh, ah. <laughs> with a license and you're not following those guidelines, I mean you're responsible for doing that. True there are lawyers who can can stop you. Like if you, let's say you own a company and you're, you're producing software that you put out to the world, you're going to have a legal team who 
kind of help you review, especially what sort of license it's used. Here at Genuine, where we build work for clients, <laughs> we use a number of different pieces of software. Ich will echt sterben, oder Leute? I'm on the PSP team, we use open source software. Uh, the framework we use the most has, uh, I believe it's an LGPL license, which states, you can use this, you don't have to follow the same license as us, though. Huh? So that allows us to then let our clients, they technically own the code, because they pay for it to be written. So then they can do with what they want. They can open source post it. Other teams, like on our .NET team, or Sitecore is kind of open source, but they have licenses where you have to buy access to the code. Right? So clients may want that. Right. So they allow picture. So we basically, yes, you need to talk. If you work for a company, they need to have a talk with a lawyer to be like, how do we want to do this? You need to kind of standardize on the tools you use so you don't have to figure that out for every project. Oh, wir brauchen noch Kuchen yes. für da hinten. Ja. So, what the code produces? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't think it restricts that. I think like you can use all this free, you know, or this copy left software to produce something and sell what's produced. Uh, I would assume that's the case because you're assembling these pieces in a certain way that you're producing something. I don't know if you'd be considered creative, but that's unique. So yeah, you could probably sell what's produced. Just the, the code you used to write that, you can't say like, oh, this is our, you can't sell the code. You know, yeah. you're creative. I don't know where that would get in if you used strong copy left code to generate code. I don't know what that would have in there. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Uh, so probably. All right. That's Ouch. It. Thank you. Hey, oh, Leute. Yeah. Das war doch ein bisschen aufklärend ähm, über Ah, Boys, ich brenne. Ähm, ist was? Was ist mit dir? Wieso ist der nicht? Okay, ja, äh, das war Mike Miles, oder? Ja, Michael Miles. Ähm, Link zum Video ist in der Beschreibung. Link zum Server ist natürlich auch in der Beschreibung. Oder beziehungsweise Adresse des Minecraft Anarchie Vanilla Servers und dann sehen wir uns in der nächsten Folge dieser Dauerwerbesendung wieder.